How are you? Welcome. Congratulations on acquiring this material. We are going to commence here a construction project that will be carried out in multiple stages. The main emphasis of this course is on the methods and techniques for recovering and sustaining good health. Of course, you will learn. If you are a healthcare professional, you will be applying this in your office, helping others. No medicine or surgery talk here. No medicine or surgery discussion in this context. We will discuss how you can maintain or regain your health without relying on medication or undergoing surgery for treatment. I'm not saying it can't be used. I'm saying course focuses on this, right? The course's focus is this. This sentence has been with me for years because I think it's powerful, especially for opening this course. William Gibson, who was an American writer, this phrase of his, the future has already arrived, but it is not yet evenly distributed. That is, if a person is sick, someone in the world knows how to cure that disease. That knowledge may not be spread yet. As you will see here, we will bring knowledge that is not widely disseminated. Otherwise, it would not be worth acquiring this course. If I were to speak only the obvious things that you know, it wouldn't make sense for you to acquire the course. You must have an open mind for this to occur. Correct? Very good. Who am I? I am a cardiologist an expert in nutrition, showing you that I have validation of my diploma in the U.S., the revalidation we call here. I graduated in 72, in John 73, graduated in DEC 72, in John 73, I took the exam at the American Embassy, took a full-day test, passed, and here is my diploma validated in the U.S. I'm a doctor in Brazil and the United States, right? Very well, I am. Here is my master's degree in cardiology. He was made at the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio. At that time, there was no cardiology master's degree in Sao Paulo. Everyone was heading to Rio de Janeiro. In 73-74, I did my master's degree. I was the first minor. I am from Minas Gerais and the third Brazilian to have a master's degree in cardiology. Since 83, I've been a member of the American College of Cardiology, not just paying the fee, which I also pay. I'll have this title, and I believe only 19 Brazilians have achieved it. You have to prove you've made a substantial contribution to world cardiology. Of my 100 plus scientific articles published in indexed American medical journals, this applied gave me the right to receive the fellowship of the American College of Cardiology with honor, as if I were, I am also a cardiologist, right? But besides that, I am also an expert in nutrition. You see, via the Brazilian Medical Association, Brazilian Association of Neutrology, my neutrology degree, the CRM permits two specialties. Therefore, I possess RQE for cardiology, and I possess RQE for neutrology. I am a cardiologist and an expert in nutrition, here for you. I am a cardiologist, my RQE, the number is there. You can call any council, the Federal Council of Medicine, and give this number. 29, 5 and 17, they say I'm a cardiologist. 29, 4, 5, 5, they say I am an expert in nutrition. RQE stands for Specialist Qualification Registration. To be a specialist, a specialist doctor, you have to have what is called RQE. Is that correct? It is extremely good. There will be no additional heading. Not important. In the past, what matters is here now. Start by quoting Socrates. You are aware that Socrates was the teacher of Plato. Plato was the teacher of Aristotle. Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. Great Greek trio. Socrates used to say, Health is not everything, but everything is nothing without health. I did pre- and post-operative care for Dr. Michael DeBake at Methodist Hospital in Houston. For two years and a bit, 
and I cared for patients who spoke Portuguese and patients who spoke Spanish, and it was extremely costly to conduct a one-week, ten-day examination at Mestre's hospital. Only very rich people went there. He arrived in his own little car, with his own security, etc. In that doctor-patient relationship at the bedside, all those multimillionaires would say to me, Dr. Dr. Ribeiro, I would give everything I have to recover my health. My greatest wealth, above all else, is health. Without health, you have nothing. Right? And this course will instruct you on how you can enhance your health even more. Or if you have any illness, how can you recover from this illness? One of our guidelines here will help you with the way you are doing it. Right? Very well. The concept of health, we have four levels. I possess good physical health, mental health, emotional well-being, and spiritual health. Not only the physical part, we'll cover other aspects here in this course, in these eight chapters we're beginning. This sentence is mine. I hope you like it. When physiology is optimized, the body triggers a self-healing process. Not the doctor heals. Doctor hinders cure. Nature is the ultimate healer, not the doctor. We possess this life force. If we furnish sufficient raw material, we shall construct well-being. But to build health, I also need raw material. No one builds anything in the physical world without raw materials, right? So, Mr. Francis Bacon, the renowned Francis Bacon, an Englishman, he used to express, knowledge is power. I disagree with him. I think knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. Knowledge is only power when it moves from the realm of thinking to the realm of action, only when put into practice. My first recommendation for you, apply what you learn here. If it only exists in your mind, it is abstract and lacks validity. Put it into practice for real-world relevance. She'll be valid when, besides knowledge, you must develop skills. If I only have knowledge and lack skill, that knowledge is abstract. Knowledge is power when applied. I hope you apply what you are learning. You will learn here in this course. Right? So, since we're talking about health recovery, I'm going to show you here how you get sick and how you recover. On one side is health, seen in blue. On the other side is disease. On top, there is a red arrow that goes from health to disease, and it happens gradually. It's not sudden. Nothing in biology occurs abruptly unless it's an anomaly. But then I initially vigorously feel unwell. Then I begin. This sensation worsens. It amplifies. Then my ability to function. I will no longer be able to work due to feeling very ill. And ultimately, it is structural. It is solidified. A tumor emerges, an infection emerges, whatever. So, it is energetic, sensory, functional, structural. How do we recover our health? Just as we get sick, first we are going from disease to health, that blue arrow down there. Initially, we will energetically improve then enhance the sensory aspect, functionality, and ultimately the structure. You want to know the following, how do we do first, to avoid illness, to maintain health. And secondly, once sick, how do I return to health? This is our focus. This is our course of action that we are commencing. Combating a disease after it has become apparent is similar to attempting to dig a well when you are in need of water or producing a weapon after the war has already commenced. The optimal time to treat a disease is to avoid acquiring it. The most effective treatment I am aware of for any disease is to not acquire it. Possessing the knowledge to maintain good health is fundamental. Is that correct? To restore good health, prioritize nutrients over medications. 
Medicine alone cannot fully restore and sustain optimal health. Medication, its main purpose is to alleviate the symptoms experienced by the individual. Nutrition therapy, the topic of our discussion, enhances resistance to diseases. A sick individual, he is a malnourished patient in certain respects. A vital nutrient is lacking. Sometimes missing just one nutrient is enough. If you lose your central incisor tooth, your smile will be compromised. But I have 32 teeth. I lost one. I got 31. But it doesn't matter. Your smile is gone. Your perfect smile is gone. Because you don't have a tooth in the front, you can take this same concept. Person lacks potassium. Death can occur due to low potassium. Suffers dies from low potassium. Cardiac arrhythmia, cardiac arrest, ventricular fibrillation caused by potassium deficiency. To give you an idea, how does the thing work? In our life, in our daily lives, do you know of your father, grandfather, older brother, or anyone with five chronic diseases? Is that not rare? The individual has osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease due to smoking. They take a minimum of 12 medications, referred to as drugs, daily. So this individual who is currently taking the 12 medications there, she now has an additional disease caused by the medications. Do not you believe me? Just read the bypass of any patented medicine and you will see. They must put it there by law. What does the doctor say? Don't read the ball or you won't take it. It's true, but you have the obligation to read because your health, you are responsible for it. You cannot delegate your health to the doctor.